Good afternoon. Welcome to Deep Locks Weekly Webinar. I appreciate you uh, joining us today. And uh, today's webinar will be focused on Flatbush, New York, Brooklyn. We'll be looking at industrial development. Before we get started, we're going to just wait a few more minutes to let some more people jump on and join us. And I do appreciate you taking the time to join us each week and learn about Deep Blocks and our exciting uh, new software and everything we're doing, the new developments and features we keep continue to add. Um, my name is Michael Cavone. I'm the Chief Revenue Officer of Deep Blocks. And we'll be conducting today's webinar, I conduct them each week, and bringing to different cities, different markets, so we can evaluate um, how to look at certain properties, certain sites, and different development potential. And again, wait a few more minutes and let some more people join us. Feel free to use our chat to ask some questions. Um, if you have any questions after the seminar, feel free to reach out to me at michael at deepblocks.com. Also, remember you can always email me to set up a one-on-one -on -one demo and to go over our software in uh, more detail and go in more depth. And we're gonna wait a few more minutes. Thank you again. Some more people join. Thank you for joining us this week. I do appreciate it. Like I mentioned, we're gonna be looking at Brooklyn, New York and looking at an industrial development play in Brooklyn, in the area of Flatbush. We're gonna kind of go through the search capabilities and kind of scan, mark, do a market scan of Flatbush and throughout Brooklyn and kind of hone in on a few properties to see what makes the most sense for an industrial development uh, play. Again, I'm just going to wait a few more minutes before to let some more people jump on and join us. If at any time throughout, again, the course of this webinar, you have a question, please feel free to jump in and ask via the chat, and I will do my best to answer those questions. And also, you can reach me at michael at deepblocks.com if you have any additional questions after the webinar. I'm going to share my screen and kind of show you. And here's our website, deepbox.com. Uh, you can find a lot of good information here on our homepage, as well as we have our cities section, which kind of goes through the uh, various markets that we're in. We're currently in 45 markets with zoning data, and we're adding, I believe, another 60 cities in the next couple of weeks. Uh, with zoning data, we're in a thousand plus cities with parcel level data, and you'll see here the breakdown of those cities that we're in currently with zoning data. Those are the red dots on the screen, and then the blue dots represent all the cities we have parcel level data. Uh, we also have the webinars link, which shows the webinars from previous weeks. So if you missed this week's webinar, you can always go to this section and watch the video that we upload. We show some tutorials, again, 60 second clips of our software to uh, learn about the functionalities and how to navigate through our software and use it. And um, they're very, again, they're only 60 seconds, very impactful and very helpful. And lastly, we have our pricing, which currently is at $18,000 a year. Um, that's our annual rate. And it's two thousand or 2,000 a month. The annual rate is obviously a little bit lower. And recommended um, you can get grandfathered into that price if you subscribe now uh, by the end of the year our pricing will be up to thirty six thousand dollars as we continue to scale out and add more cities to our platform and add additional map layers and data set with that being said we're going to get this started and jump into the platform uh, here you're looking at right now is my dashboard this is where all my projects get sa saved and we're gonna jump into the search engine. So there's, again, the software is broken into two different interfaces. The front end's a market scanner or the search engine. And then once you select parcel after going through your search, you will then use the uh, backend interface or module, which will, is our 3D modeler and our financial analysis, where we get a one year back of the envelope return on cost. So jump into that search engine and as I, Kind of do this scan throughout Brooklyn. I will show you the various features and functionalities of uh, DeepLock software, especially on this market scanner. A lot of great 
uh, capabilities that allow you to, again, search, go through thousands and thousands of parcels and narrow down your search to just a handful and quickly identify potential sites for development. So we're gonna type in Flatbush, New York. There you go, hit the search engine. And one thing I'd like to always advise anyone when you use our software, one of the uh, key things to do, I like to do is go up here and zoom out of it to 80%. That way you can capture more parcels within your viewport. Uh, this is my, this is the viewport you are currently looking at. And then after we even do that, I'd like to zoom out even further. But really, again, capture as much as possible, as many parcels as possible, and really get that macro level uh, uh, view of this area so we can really preserve and kind of scan uh, as, as many parcels as possible and then start narrowing down the parcels using our refined search uh, section. So here again, we are in Flatbush area. And yeah, the goal today is to find a site looking for an industrial uh, development. So we're going to basically use uses allowed. We're going to look search but based on buildable area. Buildable area is a new slider that we recently added. So it gives you an idea of what can be built on that particular site and what's, what's allowed. Uh, so it's a great feature really to, again, help refine that search and reduce the number of properties um, from thousands of properties, again, down to just a handful and really uh, specify and get into a a site selection that really you know meets your criteria. So just to quickly go through some of the functionalities here, we have our tool set up here. This is our satellite layer, which is very useful as you kind of work on and, and reduce your search down to the handful of properties. It's like it's always good to turn that satellite layer on to really understand a certain area and certain section of uh, a, a city or an area or the market that you're looking at. I'll show you that feature in a little bit. This is our site selection tool, selects one parcel at a time. Here's our assemblage tool. You can select multiple parcels at one time to evaluate, uh, again, the assemblage. Here's our draw parcel tool, which is very helpful, where you can draw parcels anywhere throughout uh, the country. And, and sometimes we like to use this part, draw parcel tool to draw parcels within a larger parcel. So it just gives you some flexibility. But here we have our market scanner and just kind of really drives this entire interface and the search process. So we can either search by zoning district if you know your district, but for this particular example, we're gonna be looking for industrial type uh, searches. And for this municipality, they use what's called manufacturing establishments. That's in other words, their type of industrial use is allowed. So as you see, I select that use allowed and right away 69 parcels are matching in this particular area of Flatbush. And you'll notice that you can also export these out to a CSV file, uh, which will give you a list of all the parcels matching along with about 15 columns of data tied to those particular parcels. And always keep in mind, you can move your screen uh, north, south, east, or west, and that automatically updates your search results and just keeps you, and gives you that ability to, again, really scan through an area relatively quickly and see you know, based on what's being highlighted, and the area itself where uh, potential sites are for, again, development plays tied to manufacturing establish, establishments, which also is considered industrial. And just before I kind of start refining that search, just another thing we can always use, we have our map layers over here. The map layers, again, really are very helpful in understanding the marketplace, understanding different segments and uh, sectors. So we can, one of the, we throw on the existing buildings right here. We can put this in 3D mode and you, again, quickly again, identify and understand the layout of an area. Just a nice way of seeing how the area is and certain, how certain things reside in the area. I go back to that 2D mode, which I prefer to search in from a macro level. Quickly refresh. So we're going to go back to 2D. Buildings off. All right. So I had to refresh my screen there. Apologize. So again, going back, we go back to the uh, market scanner, which will load in one second. 
And just actually, while I'm showing this part of the screen, one thing to keep in mind, if you zoom out too far and the parcels are no longer appearing with that blue outline, that means you zoomed out a little too far and you kind of zoom back in and that will activate the market scanner. So there you guys see the blue lines reappear. So now our market scanner and search engine will be activated and we can again resume that search. So just a quick way to want to show you that example so that you understand how this uh, operates. So again, we're gonna put that manufacturing establishments in. And we get our results back. So again, some of the other uh, additional layers we have, again, for this particular search, which are really helpful, we have our industrial rates. This is dollar per square foot. Uh, it appears in a heat map. One thing to always keep in mind, anything that we show in these map layers, you can see in the map legend. And it kind of is broken down. Uh, it shows you how the data is sourced as well as it shows how that data is represented. So if we scroll down, here's the industrial lease rates per square foot per year. Uh, the way this is being generated is by census track and it's by our machine learning model. So we're giving a really strong baseline of the dollar per square foot uh, lease rates being charged. So again, just gives us a nice idea of the, what we can charge in these particular markets. So as you can see underneath, we have these certain sites are highlighted. So just will help validate that maybe I wanna focus in on this particular area or this particular area. So just a really cool map layer feature. Uh, going back to our search engine and we can turn that off. Uh, some other additional information is our people layer, which is based on census data. Uh, from 2010 to 2018, it actually just released 2020, which we'll be updating shortly. So that'll uh, cover from 2010 through 2020 in uh, upcoming weeks. But again, just to give you an idea of how this is represented, we want to kind of understand population. For instance, in this particular area, we turn this on, a heat map will come up and it will basically show you how the, uh, show you the population breakdown throughout these different areas of Brooklyn. And again, you'll see the areas that we have searched and highlighted underneath. So we can just get, again, a good indication of the population based on the search results on the parcels matching. We can do this as well for median rent, median income and employment. Uh, so again, if we're looking for, try to, you know, for an industrial play and we wanna help increase the employment for a particular area, we could turn this on and say, all right, maybe we're looking for maybe a little bit lower in employment percentage and that way we can bring some opportunities to that particular neighborhood. So again, another way of identifying and, and understanding a particular section of Brooklyn and doing our search to help us make our decision on where we want to select this particular development site. We also can use the demographic trends, which I'll show you in a bit as we kind of really refine our search. So let's go back to our market scanner. So, Right now, again, I have use allowed manufacturer establishments, which is tied to industrial. Now, our next step is we're going to look at buildable area. I want to look at buildable area between 100,000 square feet and 150,000 square feet. I'm going to turn that on. Put it 100,000 there, 150,000 there. And now, all of a sudden, we just went from 67 parcels just down to six. So it's very helpful. Again, just in a matter of seconds, we start refining our search and reducing it to something more specific based on our criteria. And another thing that I really want to look for are certain uh, lots of existing buildings uh, areas. So we, we're going to put in 500 to 5,000 square feet to start and see what kind of results we get. It looks like we have one result. And it's actually, let's look at this particular result. I'm going to scroll in a bit to kind of show you the trends. So now we're scrolling and we're gonna look, focus in on this one parcel and see if this parcel makes sense based on what we're trying to accomplish. And you'll notice here, just to kind of understand and dem demonstrate the demographic trends, again, this is being pulled from the census data. But what we can do is we can highlight these different um, census tracks by putting our mouse over the color square. You'll start to see them pop up on the screen. All right, so we're going to focus in on 504. So I'm going to turn the other ones off so I can focus in on 504 and understand that population trend for this particular area. A little bit of a decline in the population for this area, so maybe this is not the best site location. Uh, let's look at some other 
demographic trends. We can look at employment for population. So again, we're going to study 504. Turn these off. And let's see, we have 504. And this is the uh, US average as well. We can see the po employment for population kind of went up, flattened down, and there's a little bit on with the decline. So this might not be the best site location, but let's just look at the actual site. We can select it. We can hit the street view and see exactly what it is. And it looks like it's a gas station. So this might not be the most optimal site to develop on. So let's go back to our market scanner. Let's continue our search. Let's maybe expand that search a little bit. I'm gonna zoom back out. And let's, let's try a existing building area of, let's go up to 10,000 square feet to see if we can increase our uh, parcels matched. I'm gonna put 10,000 in there. And now we have, let's see, move my screen a little bit and see if this updates a bit. Zoom out a little more, see if we get a couple more matches. So as we zoom out and adjust that criteria, all right, now we have another parcel matching. So let's see, we have two parcels matching. We already looked at that one to the left. And all right, here's the second one. So again, I'm gonna zoom back in, kind of study this parcel and look at the different trends going on in this area. Let's see what we got here. All right, as I zoom in, and then we're gonna, as we zoom, see the, the key is as you zoom in, the, the demographic trends will, these graph lines will reduce and they're really just focus in on the certain sentence, census tracts tied to that particular area. Now we zoom in a little bit more, kind of get that micro level evaluation of this market and this particular city block. All right, let's see if we get a little bit more. All right, now you can see these trend lines are starting to reduce just a handful. And let's see what census tract this one is. All right, that's right in that 794. So let's shut these off. Let's see, these trends make more sense for us. And this is also a little bit of a decline in population. So that's good. We're seeing a little bit of an increase in employment for population. So this might be a little bit more of a opportunistic place to develop on. So I'm gonna select this site and let's kind of see what's on this particular site using that street view that we uh, capability that we have. So we click the street view and here we can see it looks like it's an empty lot. That actually is got tremendous potential. So this, is, this could be a good play for us and a good way of um, developing our particular industrial site. So what I like to do from this point on is now we have a certain site selected. And again, the whole concept of using deep blocks is really to streamline that process of understanding and analyzing, analyzing various sites. And to do it again, in a matter of minutes, instead of it taking weeks or months and coordinating with your analysts, coordinating with brokers and architects on back and forth, we allow you to do that all in this one-stop shop interface where again, you can get the zoning data, the parcel level data and some market data. And again, evaluate various uh, plays and go through thousands and thousands of sites and narrow down to a handful and start analyzing what makes the most sense for your particular investment goals and development goals. So I'm gonna select this parcel like I already did. Here we get our property info. So here's some demographic information. Here's that pro some additional property info, existing building. And then we get into our, <clears throat> our zoning information, which is, Gives you a nice breakdown of the, the key components of the zoning limits. We get to show you parking by use, use the general uses allowed, and then we get into the specific uh, uses allowed. Just going through, you can see all the various things this thing, uh, this particular property is zoned for, and definitely meets my requirements in terms of this industrial play that I'm trying to create. Here are, this, here are the setbacks based on the zonings, which I'll show you how that affects our modeling. So the next step after that is once I feel pretty good about this particular site, 
we're going to go to preliminary underwriting. And here, again, you can select various property uses. Uh, you can see there's tremendous flexibility with the software. We can combine property uses, but again, for this particular example, we're focusing in on industrial. And I'm going to do just a two FAR to start. And we hit continue. So right now, once I hit continue, what's going on is the model is being built. Uh, it's pulling in various data sets to create this model, as well as, well as sub market values for the assumptions. And we'll go through the example of the finding this building and generating the model. And here on this back end interface, again, this is where you get your financial analysis. It's a one year back of the envelope return on cost. It's a very uh, seamless way of going through various assumptions uh, and understanding what makes the most sense for this particular site and to see if we can generate a solid return on cost. Uh, again, it's a one year snapshot. And, you know, what we could do just to keep in mind that. Uh, DPLOX has the ability to share projects with your uh, co-workers who they have licenses as well. You can copy these projects and do various iterations of this particular um, play so that we can say, all right, let's look at the, this play based on this industrial uh, use. We could actually add, we want to add a, maybe an office component. We could quickly add an office component. So again, we, we give you a tremendous amount of flexibility to uh, review and analyze this site in, in various different uses to really see what's going to give you the most potential and the best return on cost uh, for the site. So if the, one of the first things we like to do is, again, we go into, we can adjust the building height, which I'm actually going to adjust to 20 feet. You'll see that I'll raise the building a little, a little bit. The next thing I like to use is go into the setback mode. Before I go into the setback mode, I'd like to just show you, again, here on the right side, we bring through that property info from that front end interface and that market scanner. And again, we show you the setbacks based on the zoning. So it's 20 feet on the front setback on an hour street and it's only 15 if it's on a wider street. So uh, we're gonna say that this is gonna be 15. And then on that rear, it's 20 feet. We have a question. Um, yes, this will be available to watch later. I will post and upload all webinar videos to the webinar uh, section of deepblocks.com. And we will also upload it through our LinkedIn site as well. But yes, it's definitely available. So I'm gonna go in that setback mode and I'm gonna show you how you can actually uniquely identify the different areas of the building so we can adjust each side uh, specifically. So for instance, we're gonna make this A, that'll be our primary side. We're gonna make this our rear and we're gonna leave the B and C, we're gonna leave these, these as B. So again, based on these setbacks that we read in the zoning, that front end needs to be at least 15 feet if it's a wider street, and then that rear needs to be 20. We put those in and you'll see, <clears throat> once it loads the map, you'll see the building automatically adjust. And I'll show you based, we'll turn it around, you'll see that pale green around that shows you that here's our, here's our setbacks that I just uh, instituted for this particular building going around. And so the next step after we kind of put those setbacks in is we start entering our assumptions. Our assumptions for the industrial use, uh, we can adjust the square footage to say maybe I want to go a little bit less than 44,000 square feet. I'll say it's going to be 42,000 square feet. And you'll see the building again will adjust. Uh, we can change the lease income. I'm going to say we're going to probably get a little bit higher than 1690 a square foot. I'm going to say we can get 19. 50. And you'll notice anything I enter in these assumptions, our KPIs down below automatically adjust. You'll also see our return analysis and the assumptions here. Well, first, the back of the envelope calculations automatically are computed and they are updated based on any of the assumptions you enter here. And then our assumptions over here are automatically broken down and updated based on, again, the entries you make into these inputs. So I'll just continue to go down. We can see we're gonna leave this at 1950 expense re reimbursable leave at zero. And then our we'll leave a vacancy of 4% in the OPEX at five dollars a square foot. Go with the project cost, we can adjust that purchase price. So say we can negotiate this down a little bit to the 2.5 million. Again, that'll help our ROC go up. Uh, we're gonna say there's gonna be zero dollar demolition cost because it looked like it was there was no building on that particular site that also 
improves our ROC. We can adjust that hard cost again. So we're bringing in some market values into these dollar per square foot based on our machine learning and what we understand for these different sections of, again, different markets. So we are bringing relatively current rates, but we give the ability to, you the ability to adjust them and update them. So let's say we can do a little bit better than $1. 40, 149, we'll say we can do 130 per square feet. And again, your ROC. So now we're looking at an ROC about 6% for this particular industrial play in Flatbush, Brooklyn. It's a pretty solid return for this type of use. And one of the next things I'd like to do is we can export this report out and again, share it with our colleagues, share it with investors, whoever it may be. Uh, we can enter who the report's from, who it's going to. We can write our own little summary. We can choose a cover image for this particular property, upload our own logo for our company, for your particular company, and then change the color palette based on your company. So I'm just going to show you the stock report. And you'll see it's a four page PDF file. It's, it's a very, again, very useful file. A lot of our users take advantage of this, this function. And they, uh, again, share it with their colleagues, partners, whoever it may be. And one of the uh, key benefits of using the export PDF is, again, if you're going through various iterations of a particular site and projects, you just can quickly export them all out and have them uh, neatly organized and say, like, listen, here's our different uh, plays we're analyzing and evaluating. Let's go through this together. So this so just quickly going through the report. Again, you could upload and change this image right here. Your logo would go here. The color scheme would change throughout. Here's that writing summary that would be updated. You'll see who it's prepared by, who it's prepared for. The second page goes into some property info, a zoning summary, and a stacking plan. Kind of gives you a little map too of, of the location of where this particular site election occurred. We show some demographic trends. And lastly, that financial analysis, that one year back at the envelope return on cost. So again, very helpful report. Um, you know, just to kind of again show you one of the keys of this. Uh, back in interface, I could copy this project, you know, right away. Say this is going to be version two, and just to show you, like, I want maybe I want to just kind of analyze a different iteration or a different um, opportunity. Maybe I want to add some office to this industrial play, and simply all you have to do is once it loads, we just click office. By clicking office. You'll see here now that bluish purple just adds that layer in. And now we can go into our assumptions and now we can adjust the office. So say I'm gonna try to lease out 10,000 square feet. Maybe a little too much. So let's go with 9,000. So again, you just kind of adjust and you can manipulate it however you see fit. Uh, we can change, again, dollar per square foot for the office income. Maybe I can get a little more. And just another possibility that we maybe can explore and say this helps increase our return on cost. And this is how it is a good idea of what it will look like and how we can build that on this particular site. So, and again, the same thing with costs, we have a breakdown of the office costs right here. So maybe the office will only be about 200 per square foot. And again, so our OC now with an office, with an office is up to 6.95% compared to the previous uh, development play that we were analyzing, which was a little bit lower. So it just goes to show you the flexibility of the software, how we can just quickly uh, develop and create various iterations on a particular site. So we just went to Brooklyn, went through various sites, narrowed it down to two, and within minutes started developing on these two sites and created two iterations that we felt are uh, worthy of being evaluated and, and shared with our partners and take it to the next step. So that's kind of how you see the streamlined process, the process being streamlined by deep blocks and the capabilities we are bringing uh, to the development uh, development world. So just tremendous uh, the capabilities we are able to implement with the software and you know, there's just tremendous amount of upside going uh, forward with, based on our roadmap, again, we're gonna be expanding to another 60 cities. So we over a hundred cities with zoning shortly. Uh, again, we continue to add more parcel level information to and more cities with parcel level information as well. We're also adding more map layers. So we're doing 
as much as we can to really converge all these different data sets into one interface. Again, I do appreciate your time today and I appreciate you jumping on and joining us. Again, you can always find this webinar uploaded on our website at deeplocks.com. You can just go to the webinar section and you'll, we'll upload it shortly. And again, thank you so much for your time and joining us and have a great day and hope to see you guys next week.